to all my black entrepreneurs. We got to do better, y'all. So tune in to the Entrepreneurians Podcast, where we help build better black businesses. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurians Podcast with me, your girl, Tiffany Nicole, and that is Last Trace. Yeah, yeah, that is me. That mm-hmm. is me. Mm-hmm. And we're back with Miss Clarissa B, and That's it's time me. for Ninja Business. My favorite segment, Ninja Ooh. Business, <laughs> a.k.a. Oh, I can't you know. say the a.k.a. You know. You know what it means. You know what it means. Y'all ninjas know what it means. Y'all ninjas be playing. (laughs) (laughs) So, Miss Clarissa B., please tell us some ninja business that you have done or still do. Maybe you might not want to mention the ninja business that you still do. (laughs) We're all still growing. Some that you've done and how you've grown from it, and maybe some that you've avoided or suffered from from somebody else. Mm. We might have some advice on how to avoid it. Mm-mm-mm. Well, maybe it was us that did it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't going to put y'all under the bus like that. <laughs> All right, so I love doing events. And that's actually, you know, how you guys know me. Mm-hmm. And so I opened up a venue last year. And I'm like, I'm like hesitating talking about this because like <laughs> I had to really process this, y'all. <laughs> this is recent ninja biz. <laughs> so I opened up a venue in September. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I wanted to do this for years. And I the pandemic kind of had me like, oh no, you know, they're closing everything down. Mm-hmm. Right. This is not a good idea. But then I was like, all right, everything's, you know, opening back up. I want to have something ready by the summer. And so, but I don't know what I was thinking because I had just had a baby in the spring. So I was like, where did I think I was about to start a whole business? <laughs> so the summer happens. I'm looking for a spot. I get it by September. I'm open for two months. Mm-hmm. And the township started giving me problems with zoning, which I did check before I open the spot up but I was going off somebody's okay you're good versus getting it on paper that messed me up also my landlord was at the time he was like giving me funny business he was giving me ninja biz (laughs) from the start did you do correct business in the beginning he and yes, so we did it the right way, and he seemed nice. But I guess because he's from another country, he was when the zoning started giving me problems. He was acting like he didn't know what was going on and stuff. But they mm. were saying that he should have known that I couldn't be there right. as a business because it was a small plaza, and behind the parking lot were some name some neighbors mm-hmm. that was complaining. Was did anybody have the same type of business that you had? So uh-huh. in November, this is this started. Two weeks later, this is December now, I found out that two doors down, mind you, it's a five business plaza. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two doors down, another event space opens. Oh, it's an event space. So they're already giving me problems as a venue. Right. And another venue opens. As the same thing as yours. Right. And I'm like, in my lease, I made sure there was an exclusivity clause so that nobody else could come Mm -hmm. in. You should, right. And I'm like, so how is my business here? You know I'm a venue and you let another venue open. He was like, oh, no, I thought you were a different business. I'm like. You were throwing you parties really? my way, <laughs> referring people to me. Oh now I'm not a. Oh man! So I was trying to, like, I had got my lawyer together and everything. But when that happened, she left because she was like, "Oh, the zoning's giving me problems." She left, so I couldn't say exclusivity against right. them anymore. Okay. But hmm. then it. This is now January, and like, mind you, from November to January, I'm still trying to pay my rent like this is gonna work out for me Mm -hmm. i'm trying to be positive and it was just like you know my mom was like don't pay him no more like this is ridiculous but i was just like he wanted that money so he was gonna tell you not only that but yeah so he was on some harassing stuff in the um township they were taking long the guy that was trying to help me in the zoning he like either got fired or he quit he couldn't help me no more so i'm sitting here like and mind you 
while I'm going through this process, I'm getting more and more depressed. Like, mm-hmm. because I, my money and then my time and I wasn't myself. And then me not being myself made my household not happy. Mm-hmm. And that really affected me. So, you know, I, like I told you, I had just had a baby in the spring. And, you know, only, you know, six and nine months later, I'm going through this crazy period because when I had my baby I had um, postpartum depression so it was like my pick me up kind of was like let me start this business I want to do this Mm -hmm. but it was just like when it was going bad oh man like my whole vibe everything went south for me and it was bad for me mentally and like uh, I don't even know like why it took me so long, but I really learned that like to not be so slow to make decisions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like had took, I took made action, I should have took action like two months prior and said, no, this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like that one lady, she was just like, I'm not paying him anymore. And she left. Right. So whatever it was that she, um, you know, she just packed her bags and left. But I was like, I put like my work into this yeah, like, it's hard I put my time yeah. into this like it's a I was, tough decision yes. especially when like you said if you're trying to pull yourself out of a funk or, or mm-hmm. something you're going through and this is your motivation and you see it you know you see your vision and this is a good were you able to start doing any business at all in the place had you had you been able to generate any money in there so i i did generate money but it was and that's what i'm grateful for i was able to generate enough money where i wasn't tearing up our account okay. Okay. so it was like i could really just pay my the rent mm-hmm. so it was more so it was a learning experience and that's what i had to look at it like because the money that i did lose per se was my security deposit and mm-hmm. that's kind of what i was holding on to okay. it was three thousand dollars which yeah. to me i'm like that's a big number because mm-hmm. we're yeah. we was you know saving that's up for a house and i'm like my mom's like if you only my mom really helped me because she was like if you only knew how much money i had to walk away from multiple times in my life oh, wow. three thousand is you know what i mean you're gonna yeah be think about it is it, is it worth your sanity fine. you're right and my husband was like you know if you let go like what's really gonna change like you're gonna be okay mm-hmm. so you know they got my back so i was like all it was right. a jewel your mom right. dropped on you yeah because saying it like that it just it brought it in a better perspective for me right like you know how many times i've walked away from money like that yeah mm-hmm. three thousand yeah. i've walked away from more than that so, i had to keep my peace that, I that, had to. That yeah, that was yeah. That would have been a big help for me. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. It's just crazy because, you know, we make things so much bigger than it is, mm-hmm. and it really doesn't have to be this entire obstacle. Like you really sometimes have to sit there and strategize. Like, yeah. what is my next move? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when you can see it especially on paper that's another thing that helped me i wrote these things out Mm kind of like a pros and cons like if i walk away Mm -hmm. what's really going to happen you (laughs) know what i mean like he's all like i'm a i'm a sue for you know was that too like the harassment like i could sue for 80 percent of the rest of the lease and stuff okay you can sue me but i I still gotta pay you so like what what you really gonna do let's yeah Yeah, what you really gonna do right but he knew he wasn't doing it right either and that's why when i was like i'm done he was like all right just drop off the keys i was like wow but i felt so good i was so relieved when Mm -hmm. i finally made the decision like being decisive and sticking to it because i can go back and forth i don't know if it's a gemini thing i'm not sure but i was just (laughs) like i have to do this for me and then ever since then it was like everything got brighter Mm -hmm. my household is happy i'm good because you know when i can pour into me then everybody else around me is good too Mm -hmm. so that was important for me um Tiff and I had a similar situation. We had multiple Airbnbs that we were renting. We had four. Mm -hmm. Um, One of them we had with a group of people that we still have. The other three were just her and I that Mm -hmm. owned them. And when the pandemic hit, we we went from having 90% occupancy. I'm talking about our our Airbnbs were always rented. It was always somebody in them. Unless we were in there cleaning or somebody was cleaning. It was rented. Yeah. So when the pandemic cap happened and they shut everything down, we went from 90 percent occupancy making anywhere from two to seven thousand dollars a month to nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All booking stopped 
and all the all current bookings that the people just haven't come to stay yet canceled. Yeah. And so you had to give them their refunds, you right? Had to give them That's refunds. what I had to well, do. Yeah, well, the thing yeah. about it is luckily with that Airbnb doesn't we don't get paid out from Airbnb until 24 hours after somebody checks in okay okay. so okay. they booked in February to stay in June right. we never received that money Airbnb, Airbnb, Airbnb held right, on to right. that money so we didn't have to like actually like oh my yes. god where are we going to get this money from imagine me yeah. taking security deposits exactly. for parties because you have to hold it yes. otherwise people flate mm-hmm. that's ninja biz yeah. but you know I was just like oh my gosh now I got to give you all the money back yeah. and mm-hmm. yep. it it was it was yeah. okay because the other thing like I really n- networked with a lot of other event owners mm-hmm. and so I event space owners so I was able to kind of transfer these people's events okay. and oh, nice. then make it That's work dope. out because other event owners they understood what I was going through mm-hmm. and so they That's would dope. you know what I mean I'm sure they it was more out. than happy to accommodate yeah <laughs> Ooh, I know right yeah, right definitely it, it definitely it worked out you know what I mean I'm at peace with it but that was a crazy time like <laughs> I can imagine yeah. I know ooh, yes ooh, ninja stuff a whole lot of ninja stuff going on yeah. it'd be crazy yeah. yes but I'm I'm grateful I'm grateful well thank you very much um, listen our next segment is called tips tricks and resources we're gonna get into some of that yes. I'm sure you have plenty right mm-hmm. yes, you got some, absolutely. some good ones for us sure, sure. alright cool <laughs> cool alright so we'll be right back y'all with tips tricks and resources this was ninja business and we out and we out